Yo, it's Joan. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be checking out Beyond the Table Chapter 1, The Gift, Critical Role docuseries. This was recommended to me by a patron, so I want to give them a quick shout out. As always, uh, Ali, always uh, hooking your boy up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Giving me the fire recommendations. So uh, yeah, they, they, they were nice enough to uh, send this my way. They didn't have to. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be checking it out. Thank you. Kick your feedback, relax, and uh, let's see what we got. Welcome to this first episode of These comments the are auto-generated, by the way. I mean, not comments, captions. The rise of critical so, role as the successful yeah, entertainment keep that in mind company. if anything's off. I would just like to start by saying thank you for all the positivity that I've already received for this project. I know it's impossible to make everyone happy, especially on the internet, but it is comforting to see that some people support this project. So, with that, let's begin with Chapter 1, The Gift. Okay. Critical Role may mean a lot of different things, depending <laughs> on who you are or how you stumbled upon them. Some may have just discovered them from their new and popular Amazon TV show, The Legend That's of Vox me. Machina. Or perhaps it was their dark and dramatic D&D campaign centered around the Mighty Nine that caught the interest of many. It is also possible that you may have come across them from one of their other internet shows that they have created and produced. Or, like me, you may have discovered their group streaming from their first campaign on Geek and Sundry, where they created hmm. the original story for Vox Machina through live improv. Regardless of how or when you found them, Critical Role has had an online presence for years, and has especially made a profound yeah, I reacted to that on the video. nerdy side of the internet. With this series, I've seen I hope that to one. explore <laughs> the entire story of Critical Role, including its journey before it was even a show, which is where I would like to begin today. Some Word. of you may be familiar with the story of Critical Role's conception, but... This video is for all Critical Role fans, both old and new, as we go into depth about their campaign's journey, and hopefully, everyone will learn at least one new thing. So, let's start at the beginning. All right. With a gift. A birthday gift to one man, Liam O'Brien. Yep, I remember this from the Between the Sheets interview. Voice actor known mm -hmm. for roles such as Gara in Naruto. It all started from a birthday party, right? And power, and a Jin Churiki. Yasuo in the League of Legends game. The blade, above all things, except a good drink. Gollum from the Shadow of War and Mordor games. He was Gollum? He's been a voice director for projects like the infamous The Last of Us, as well as countless other voices in American cartoons and English dub anime. Liam had spent time in his high school years playing Dungeons and Dragons with some friends, around the age of 16, but mainly as a dungeon master, never playing too seriously or completing a whole campaign. <laughs> However, as he got older, he had less time and more responsibilities and lost touch with the game. But Liam loved the game and always stood by that. In 2012, Liam began working with a fellow voice actor, Matthew Mercer, on Resident Evil 6 while serving as the game's voice director. Matthew oh. voiced Leon S. Kennedy in the game. Well, something good came out of that game, huh? <laughs> if that's what brought them together, alrighty, you know? We'll take it. Serving as the game's voice director, Matthew, who voiced Leon S. Kennedy in the game, is a veteran of Dungeons yeah. & Dragons, and had been playing since he was very young. Through casual Look conversation and Matt. working together, Matthew and Liam discovered their shared passion for D&D, and the campaign that Matthew was currently a part of came up. Matthew had offered a place in the campaign for Liam, but he kindly declined. These attempts went on for a while, with Matthew trying to convince Liam to experience the game again, and Liam continuing to pass on the opportunities, as he felt he needed to prioritize his profession and other responsibilities. But then, he received an offer that he couldn't refuse. For Liam's birthday, Matthew offered him a one-shot experience with some of their voice actor friends, a gift that he had finally <laughs> accepted Look in at May that, of man. 2012 under the precursor that the one-shot experience would be perfect for his new podcast. This very oh, recently podcast. created podcast, All Work No Play, was one that he had just started with oh, his friends. Oh, wow, so that's like all him. That's dope, okay, I didn't know he created that. I know he's always in them, um, from my understanding, and again, I gotta start watching those for you guys as well, because I think, I think we'll all have a good time. Which do you uh, recommend that I start with any of them? Leave your thoughts, let me know what you guys think. Like, if you have a favorite or one that you think would good, be good for me to, like, start with, let me know. recently created podcast, All Work, No Play, was one that he had just started with his best friend, Sam Regal, 
where the friends went to try new things as an excuse to hang out. However, due to the group schedule, the one-shot event was not able to happen until December of that year. And that is where their story begins. On December 8th, 2012, the first session of Dungeons & Dragons was run in Matthew Mercer's home. It was one of those, like, as soon as they entered the apartment, had, like, the table set out with candles and music playing. Nice, set the atmosphere. <laughs> Liam had brought with him Sam Regal, Orion Acaba, and married couple Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham, Fire. all of which were allegedly new to D&D at this point. On the other hand, Matthew brought his girlfriend, Marisha Ray, and mutual close friend, Talis and Jaffe, both of whom had enough experience with D&D to help direct the group. Hmm. Marisha, however, did not actually participate in the game, acting solely as a guide for all the new players. And then Matt was like, would you be willing to be there to just... I reacted to this. If you don't know, I reacted to all the Between coach? the Sheets interviews like, yeah, in sure. their entirety. This if you want to check them out on the channel, if you're new. Characters ...and then began to play through their one-time D&D experience, running on the older D&D 4th edition. The group played late into the night and even early into the next morning. Wow, dude, these tweets. But the game came to a close, and they all went their separate ways. Yet... Despite its ending, Liam could not get over how much he enjoyed playing D&D &D again, especially <laughs> with such good friends. I was just about to say, how could you not have fun with all these it guys? It was awesome. It was, it was <gasps> awesome, okay? I'm just going to say it. I'm going to blow the compression on the microphone. It was <gasps> awesome. I want more. I want more. Wow, so this, not the only one. this was like right after? Days, Dude, it would be so cool seven. to watch these. Liam reached out to the group, asking if everyone else was feeling the same way he was, and he hoped to start a reoccurring game from where they had left off. Unfortunately, there was no immediate response. And I sent out an email and nobody responded for a long time. Of course. This left Liam feeling unsure and even a bit awkward about how excited he had gotten about the whole idea. But luckily for him and the rest of us, the excitement was mutual. And it was only due to the group's conflicting schedules that no one had responded immediately to Liam's message. Matthew also had similar feelings about the game, wondering if this group would continue to meet. And we all finished the game, we all had a blast, everyone was drinking, it was a good time, and then and I was like, cool, that was, that was your first D&D experience, hope you guys had fun. And then there was that, like, three-day period of silence, where I was like, oh, I hope you had a good time. And Travis eventually <laughs> reached out to the group, much like Liam did, to encourage another session. And that email came in from Travis that was like, so guys, um, when are we playing again? <laughs> we happen in that bad the boy? We connected shortly after, and this game eventually became a reoccurrence, evolving into a full-on campaign. The group would meet every so often to continue their story, but it was never a stressful commitment. The campaign was solely intended to shoot the breeze and have a good time. Slowly, the players figured out the game and began to flesh out their characters. Laura and Liam played half-elf twins since they shared the same real-life birthday and were both drawn to similar character playstyles. Liam played a rogue and Laura played a ranger, both matching stealthy perceptive characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Travis, however, went a completely different route, going as a half barbarian who fights first and thinks later. Rage, baby. If at all. Sam spun his humor and lightheartedness into a gnome bard, solely based on the recommendation by Liam as what was considered the worst character type he could pick. Can I just be the worst? Wow. What's the worst? I'll be the, the worst. worst character. How's it Is the worst like character gnome? type? Sure, what's that? Orion played a headstrong dragonborn sorcerer, always looking Badass. for an opportunity to demonstrate his abilities. Mm hmm. And Taliesin originally started as a Dragonborn Paladin character. You know what, guys? I have a question. I have a question. How would you feel, right? How would you feel about me reacting to a little bit of Campaign 1, right? Not as frequently as I do Campaign 2, because Campaign 2's weekly is difficult to get nice, sizable chunks of things looked at with all the other things I react to. But every now and then, okay, if I react to Campaign 1, okay, alright, live, right? I make it a thing where I'm there, live reaction, you guys can just watch it with me. And then, I guess maybe I can... I don't know how it works. I've never done that this before, but maybe I can chop it up and edit it down for people to see afterwards. And maybe I can make that like a channel member thing or a patron thing. What do y'all think? Just a thought. Anyways. Abilities. And Taliesin originally started as a Dragonborn Paladin character earlier in the campaign, but eventually changed pretty quickly into a new character 
a dark and mysterious human playing a homebrew class that he and Matthew had made together, Percival. calling it a gunslinger. Together, the group formed the Super High Intensity Team, going more commonly by of a course. less respectable acronym at the suggestion of Sam's character. Of course. However, the group was only like this for one session before Ashley Johnson's introduction in 2013. Ashley was working with Liam on a little game called The Last of Us, mm -hmm. where she played one of the lead characters, Ellie. They both went to Troy Baker's birthday party, who voiced Joel from the same game, where mm -hmm. Ashley overheard Liam talking about the game and she quickly wanted to join and was accepted. Oh, that's awesome. This being mm -hmm. Ashley's first time playing pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons, she curiously jumped on the opportunity. With a lot of popular characters and roles already filled within the group, Ashley chose to create a gnome cleric, thinking it would be funny and interesting to play. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll be a gnome, I don't know, because that's kind of funny. Yeah. And I went to the game and everybody was like doing This is a little awkward now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and I was hooked. She very soon became an invaluable member of the team. I'm glad she was hooked. Bolstering the group and keeping everyone alive. It would appear at the same That's time. That's a cute Marisha puppy, man. Everybody's got a picture with the, the puppy. Her half elf druid. She based her story loosely on the story of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. It made charisma her weakest ability, so that she would have an excuse to be more introverted, given that she had not been very familiar with the members of the group at this time. Mm. Regardless of Marisha's initial passive playstyle or Ashley's newer experience to the game, with both of them officially part of the group, the team was born. From here, the story slows down just a little bit. The group continued to gather and play consistently when their schedules allowed, building a cohesive story while fleshing out who their characters really were. It is also important to note that once they started their campaign, they switched to Pathfinder as their game version, which required some homebrew for characters like Grog, Travis's Goliath, since this was not a native race in the Pathfinder system. Mm, but things continued okay. this way, until June of 2014, when the company of Geek and Sundry met with Critical Role and the idea to stream this campaign was kindled. For oh, a that's context, cool. okay. Geek and Sundry was a YouTube channel founded in 2012 off of the YouTube original channel initiative that YouTube did, where they funded channels to make content that they felt people would want to see. Under the category Geek Entertainment, Felicia Day and Kim Evie proposed the channel Geek and Sundry, where they would make several oh. mini shows about. Oh! Word Felicia Day pitched it? It all makes sense. It all makes sense. Felicia Day and Kim Evie proposed the channel Geek and Sundry, where they would make several mini shows about geeky content alike, and their proposal was approved. They ended up growing as a channel and were receiving millions of views consistently. In 2014, however, Felicia Day was working with Ashley on one of their shows, Spooked, and she got wind of the campaign that the group was running and instantly became intrigued. She had previously had nice, ideas nice, to launch nice. a Twitch channel to pair with their YouTube channel and felt like a show about a D&D campaign could be the perfect content for this pairing. I am skimming over some facts here because this is a commentary about Critical Role, not Geek and Sundry, but mm -hmm. it is still important to have some sort of background information on how this idea of streaming the D&D campaign sparked. Regardless, Geek and Sundry reached out to Matthew and proposed the idea, to which he then proposed to the group, and the group decided to give it a chance. Did. That's <laughs> awesome. This started several months of pre-production, where there were logistics figured out on how the campaign would be streamed, as well as a preparation period for Matthew. He fleshed out a lot of the story, and had the group transition to D&D 5th edition due to its more mainstream acceptance and easier combat system. He essentially wanted to create an easier viewing experience for the casual audience. Also, as they were preparing for their streaming platform on their D&D campaign, the group decided to change their group name to Vox Machina, or Voice Machine in Latin, nodding at their professions mm. as voice actors. Mm -hmm. This transition to streaming wasn't perfect, and there were some attempts to change the way the group played the game by Geek and Sundry's executives, but the group refused, and only agreed to do the stream if they could keep what they had, which is what made it <laughs> nice. so special to them, and thank goodness they did. In March of 2015, Geek and Sundry had their first stream, and on the 12th of March, the first episode of Critical Role streamed, and it was, well, that's going to be a discussion for another video. It was a little rough. It was a little rough, but you know. Thank you for making it this far, <laughs> and I hope that you've enjoyed the first episode of this series. Next episode, I will be exploring the start of Critical Role streaming days and how they quickly grew to become a fan favorite show. 
But before I end this episode, I just want to have a wrap-up portion, where I kind of just give my thoughts on all of this that I've already talked about. I just first want to say, the reason I really wanted to do this is because of how much of an impact Critical Role has made in my life, and I know it's made in a lot of other people's lives. For me, this was a new level of storytelling, and I understand that there have been other shows about D&D, and there has been other D&D sessions streamed, but I feel like with the quality and work that Matthew puts into creating a cohesive story, and the commitment that these voice actors had and the excitement they had because of how new a lot of them were for the show, it just made it something that was so exciting to be a part of and to watch. Are the comic books canon? And just to be a part of it I as wonder. a community. And I knew as soon as I watched them that it was something that I'd never seen before. And I've always been a fan, but I feel like there's not enough justice done to the work that they've put in to get where they're at now, which is kind of why I wanted to make this series. What I also love about them and some of the things that I've seen in, in interviews that they've talked about is they felt how special it was too. Even the experienced D&D players like Matthew, Marisha, and Taliesin, and even Liam, they, they could tell it was something special. They could tell that it was different, which obviously it worked out for them and a lot of other people saw how awesome it was as well. Hmm. And I also know that I'm not perfect and there's a lot of things I'm going to miss or I already have missed. So please, if you know any other information, if you are familiar with some things shirt. that I may have missed out on or I just said wrong, let me know in the comments. In the end, I'm going to try to put everything together into one long documentary or video essay, and I'll have everything kind of polished up. So if cool. there's things that you know that I don't, please let me know. If you've liked what you've seen so far, please like and subscribe so that way you can be notified when I post the next episode. And yes, you can stay sir. With this series. I also do just want to mention that I do have a Patreon it's not required by any means, but if you like to JR support this channel or support what I do, feel free to go check that out. Thank you for being such an amazing community. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Yes, sir. Great video, man. Great video. All right, guys. So that was that. I'm about to get my thoughts on it. If you're interested in hearing it, stick around. But if not... Feel free to leave. Thank you for watching. Uh, before you go, if you made it this far, though, <laughs> leave a like. Maybe subscribe. But yeah, <laughs> if you're interested in my thoughts on this whole project, uh, yeah, here we go. So this was a very good intro video, I think, to kind of just lay the groundwork of what we were going to be seeing with this project, this docuseries, right? Um, and it seems like uh, this, this guy, I'm just going to call you JR. Um, it seems like JR has got a pretty good understanding of just the ins and outs of critical role and their history and not just critical role in, in itself but like each individual main cast member you know uh seems like he's been a fan for a minute so this will be definitely uh cool to see and uh yeah i'm interested to 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 learn about this series here um yeah Fantastic video, man. Fantastic video. Definitely check out the guy's Patreon if you're interested. Um, I'm going to leave the link to the original video, as always, when I react to a YouTube video like this, um, in the description. So feel free to check out the original video, leave it a like, give him a comment, all that stuff. Subscribe if you want to see the docuseries as well. Um, and uh, yeah, man, uh, it was great. I uh, definitely want to check out the All Work No Play. Leave me, leave me your, I mean, yeah all work no play or right i think that's what it's called anyways that you know let me know what you guys want to see first if you have any recommendations on that and if you guys would be interested in uh every now and then and what like i said it won't be as frequent but it will definitely be something that i'll do for you guys especially as like patrons uh, or channel members once i get to the channel member point um yeah, man, it'll be for, for you guys uh, to just watch along with me, you know what I mean? And we'll talk and just have a good time together. And, um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I think I'll do if enough of you would like to see it, if enough of you would like to watch it. Because um, it is very time-consuming, and I do work hard on these videos, so um, if, if, if it's not getting, you know, if it's not getting the support that would uh, indicate that I should be working hard as hell on this shit... <laughs> That it won't be something I'll really do. I'll kind of stick to campaign too. But if you guys really do show support, if you guys really do want to see it, um, you know, check out the Patreon, uh, become a patron, uh, uh, you know, leave a like on this video. Uh, just get show anything that you can show me to say, hey, yeah, we we'd like to see that. You know, feel free to let me know. 
Um, other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. Have a good morning, afternoon, or night. Stay safe, y'all, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.